Without me, ye can do nothing. Without him, ye can do nothing. And when I say nothing, I mean nothing. I mean a big zero. I mean absolutely nothing can you do without our Lord Jesus Christ. There has never been a time when God did not exist. There has never been a time when God needed anything. There has never been a time when all things did not work according to His will. There has never been a time that when His Word was spoken, it did exactly what He wanted it to do. But I'm going to call your attention this morning to the fact that we live in a generation today, a generation that has perfected everything, but it's walked with God. They seek everything, but fellowship with the Lord. They feel like that by organization and ability and human achievement, that they can get the job done, and my friend, the job's not being done. You can try to get the work done without God, but it won't get done. You can try to force your own doors open and they'll slam shut in your face. You say, preacher, I'll force them open. No, you won't. This is the point that I'm trying to give you this morning. You cannot make anything happen, but God can open doors. Amen. He can remove obstacles. He can replace them with someone else. But the Lord Jesus Christ said, Without me, ye can do nothing. You know what that means? That means that we need God. We need God more than we think we need God. God that I serve today is above my mind. He's greater than my emotions. He's beyond my reach. He's the Almighty, and there's none like Him. We need God all day long. We need God every breathing moment. We need God every time our heart beats. We need God when we go to work. We need God when we go home. We need God. We need Him in everything. We need God. You can't breathe another breath without God. Your heart can't beat another time without God. You can't be saved without God. There is no life without God. Nothing can exist without God. We need God all day long. We need God every breathing moment. We need God every time our heart beats. We need God when we go to work. We need God when we go home. We need God. We need Him in everything. We need God. Without me, ye can do nothing. Without Him, ye can do nothing. And when I say nothing, I mean nothing. I mean a big zero. I mean absolutely nothing can you do without our Lord Jesus Christ. Every thought to the obedience of Christ, what we think in our mind is going to affect what we become and how we live out our lives. The battleground is certainly in your mind. If you feed garbage into your mind, your mind is full of garbage. And if you feed garbage into your mind, it's going to obstruct, uh, hinder, uh, hide whatever promises and power of God that may be built up in your mind. So first of all, that battle that rages in the mind must be fought. And you must understand some simple truths and base your relationship with God on what God's Word says and not how you feel, nor how someone tells you you are or what you may have accomplished. We are what we are, not by what we have accomplished or what we think or who we think we are. We are who we are by what God says we are. And that's altogether important. The Bible said in 1 John chapter number 3 and verse 1, What manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. The world will never understand sonship. Oh, the world would understand you if you were religious. If you talked about the Ten Commandments all the time. If you talked about the, uh, the morality and if you talked about uh, all of the things that relate to religion, sure the world can relate to that because it's the outward. It's what you can see. Sonship is not what you do. Sonship is who you are. Once you ever get it settled in your heart and in your soul, that the day that God saved you, you became a son of God by the new birth. God is my Father. And nothing's going to change that. Satan comes back and reminds me of the life that I lived for 27 years. Satan comes along and reminds me of my weaknesses and shortcomings and failures and faults. Satan is sure there, Johnny, on the spot to hinder me in every aspect of my life. But there's one thing he can't change. 
I am a son of God by the new birth. Now, if you really get that in your mind, you'll understand what your roots are about. You'll understand what your life is about. You'll understand what it's all about. It's not about you. It's about Him. I want to be like my Father. I want to be what He is. I want to be where He is. Because He is everything to me. But the only way that that can happen is to go through the way, the door that He has made possible for me to approach God the Father. Satan will try to destroy that fatherhood of God in your life. He will try to make you think that you're not really His Son. That your head is full of religion. That you just decided to turn over a new leaf. You went through a reformation. He'll try to make you think in your mind that it's all in the mind. But if you'll get on your knees and go back to the point where you met Him and cry out to God about the first time you met God, He will, he will assure you in your heart that if you're either born again or you're not born again, you must remind Satan Constantly, that your righteousness is not what you do. Your righteousness is what He did. There is a righteousness now and that righteousness is the righteousness of a sinless, perfect man. That sinless, perfect man ascended to the right hand of God the Father by His own righteousness. And that righteousness becomes your righteousness. And it is no longer how you live to work out your righteousness. It is what you believe that makes you righteous. Everything that we have to do with God is based on faith. The Bible said in Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Satan will hinder you every way in the world. He'll throw every kind of a spiritual counterfeit in your path. You live in an age of great deception. And so the Bible tells us that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Jesus is my life. Jesus is my salvation. Jesus is the Savior of my soul. Jesus is the lover of my soul. Jesus is the object for my life. Jesus is my future. Jesus is everything. He's everything. He's all there is. He's all there ever has been. Is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of glory. He's worthy of honor. Our mouths should be constantly singing His praises 24-7. If you'll ever fix your mind on the Lord Jesus Christ and get it off of yourself and get it off of Satan, you'll see a change begin to take place as praise and glory comes out of your soul. I don't believe there's any way that anybody can examine the Son of God completely, examine Him like Pontius Pilate did, and say anything other than I find no fault in Him. He's glorious. He's beautiful. He's eternal. He's the Savior. And there is none beside Him. Bless His righteous name. The church has lost its identity. You ought to walk into the house of God and be confronted immediately with Jesus. Amen. That's what the sin needs is Jesus. He doesn't need to turn over a new leaf. He doesn't need to join the church. He doesn't need reformation. He doesn't need your confirmation. Amen. He needs Jesus. Amen. The Bible said in 1 John chapter number 4 and verse 4, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I agree, amen. I know what inside me that every devil in hell knows. Every devil in hell knows his name. They know what he did at Calvary. I can do all things through Christ. Hallelujah. And that Bible said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When you think you've gone down for your last time, when you think it's time to throw in the towel, when you think that there's no hope on the horizon, when you think that God has forsaken you, when you think that there's no need, there's no peace, that you'll never have what you had before, if Satan can never get you to the place where hope is taken out of your soul, then Satan can come and sift you. But the Bible says, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm talking about the God-man that lived 2,000 years ago that said to Satan in the wilderness, Get thee hence, Satan. I'm talking about the one who in weakness went to the cross and died so I could be saved. Get thee hence, Satan. The Bible says this, 
in the book of uh, 1 John chapter number 4 and verse number 4 ye are of God little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us where? in the heavens it's recorded and registered by the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ it's there it's ours it can't be changed God has blessed me hallelujah <laughs> oh yes yes he's blessed me well I feel cursed that's because you're listening to Satan and you're letting him, in, letting him try to do it and he cannot curse what God has blessed amen amen, amen. amen. Psalm chapter number 139 verse 13 I love this one for thou hast possessed my reins thou hast covered me in my mother's womb boy we're talking about an unborn unborn child now I want you to notice carefully I took these three words possessed reins and covered and I dug a little deeper into a Hebrew lexicon and here are the meaning of those words Possessed means thou hast created me. And reigns means my most sensitive, delicate part. And thou hast covered me. That means to protect me in my mother's womb. The Apostle Paul said that he separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. God's hand was on you from the first breath you drew. God's hand was on you from the first tick of your heart. God's hand was on you to bring you to this house this morning. Oh yes, you might have fought him. You might have got out of the way. You might have stumbled. Oh yes, you might have gone forward to one step and back three. Oh yes, everything that could happen to a human can happen. But he had a purpose in you coming into this world. Amen. Yeah, he did. Amen. Yeah, he did. And he has blessed me. He has... Listen. If I leave out of here today at 71, all I can say is glory to God in the highest. God's been good to me. God has blessed me beyond my wildest expectations. So I am here today because God brought me here today. You really believe that, preacher? You really believe your life is so important to God that God is definitely involved in your life? Yes, I do. I honestly believe that one little bleeding sheep on this earth, one little child, one little baby, is far more important to God than Mars. I do. I believe that that little human soul is far more important to Him than the Milky Way. Look out, all that, all that, all that out there. I don't know what's out there. I don't think anybody really knows all that's out, but I know who's out there. <laughs> That's all that matters. The Creator and Sustainer, El Shaddai. Yes, amen. So remind yourself today, you're not who you feel like you are this morning. You might have got up with a bad day, headache, been a bad day so far, you know. You don't feel saved. It's not about who you feel that you are. And it's not what somebody has told you that you are. You are who God says you are. And if you're born again, you're His Son. Yes. And he's got a place at the table that nobody else can sit. Just you. You'll find a place. I want to sit right next to Mephibosheth. Come out of Lodi Bar. I'm sitting there right next to him. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I go home this afternoon. I'm, I'm son of God. If my heart jumps out of rhythm at 1 o'clock in the morning and it's running up 150, 160 beats a minute, I know all about it. Been there many times. Been to the ER many times. I'm an old veteran at that. I'm still his son. I'm still his son. Nothing's changed. I still belong to him. I still, I'm still his. And that can't change. That's how to keep from being devoured. He wants to devour you. Have you been listening to the liar? Why don't you come down here this morning and say, Lord, let's go back to square one and start all over again. Let's just go back to the beginning. I want to go back to the beginning with you because I know there was a time when it was sweet and it was precious and I loved you and you loved me and I knew it. I want to go back there, Lord. I just want to start from scratch again. And that's good. That's good to go back to square, square one, first base. Go back to the beginning. Go back to home plate. That's the beginning. Go back to the beginning of it. 
Just say, Lord, here I am. Let's start it all over again. He won't re-save you, but he'll start your life again. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, I want to see every soul that's in this house blessed. I want to see them blessed. I want to see them happy in the Lord. I want to see them with joy in their soul. I want to see them blessed. I want to see them walking the walk with God, singing and rejoicing and shouting and blessed. That's what I want to see, Lord. I want to see homes healed and broken marriages put together again. I want to see little children that are crying for their mommy and daddy. I want to see them be able to have their mommy and daddy back in their home again. I want to see that man who's wasted and broken lives and wasted his life. I want to see him healed and put back together again. I want to see that, Father, in Jesus' name. A restorer of the breach. A builder of the walls. A healer of the land. That's my calling. In thy name we pray.